Who's that ECC member? It's Lucy! Hi, welcome to church. My name is Peter. I'm the children and young family pastor at Epping Church of Christ. And I want to welcome you to a very special service that we've prepared today. See, Epping Church of Christ is an all-age cross-cultural church. And my daughter Alexandra here can attest to the thriving families that we have here at church. So our kids ministry has been growing from strength to strength. And what better way to showcase what we do and celebrate the diversity of age that we have at our church by having a service that our kids have taken over. So yes, get ready for a kids takeover today. We're gonna quickly pray and start the service. So Lord, we just thank you for children. We thank you for the blessing that they are and how they're going to empower the next generation of thinking and be the leaders uh, of this world, Lord. We just pray for their continual growth and for them to continue to feel your love and for us to continue stewarding them to be the best that they can be. So join us for our Kids Takeover service and stick around after the service for our Zoom catch up and uh, have fellowship with people in our church and say hi to someone. Hi, welcome to our family service again. My name is Ben. I deal with Kids Connect, which is kindergarten through to year five. Continuing with our family service and because we've got kids in our service, we're gonna be doing a couple of games today. Now, to keep these interactive, we're gonna use the chat below to let us know how you're doing. Keep us updated. We're gonna have a game of rock, paper, scissors and a game of heads and tails. Let us know below how you're doing in these games so we can keep up with you all. With rock, paper, scissors, please play with people around you. Feel free to let us know how you're going there. If you're, if you're watching alone, you're going against me. I'll keep in the chat and let you guys know how you're all going. All right, round one. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Got scissors, has anyone beat me? Type it below. All right. Now, gonna go round two. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, did anyone beat me? Type below, let's go. All right, round three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Got a paper, anyone got scissors to beat me? Round four. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Scissors, anyone got a rock? Type below. Round five. 
Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Got a rock. Papers, did you beat me? And final round. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Got a paper. Any rocks? Did I beat anyone? Let us stir below. Type below quickly before we go into our second game. <laughs> All right, for our second game, we've got heads and tails, which is gonna come from this. We've got our heads and we have our tails. All right, we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna find out if heads or tails. I'm gonna go heads, I'm gonna go tails. All right, let us know below which one you've done to keep us, see if you're still in the game after this. All right, round one, heads or tails. Heads, let us know below. Did you stay in the round or are you now out? Okay, gonna do round two. Heads or tails? Heads again. All right, are we still in the game? Round three, heads or tails? Tails. All right, round four. Still in the game. Heads or tails? Heads. We're gonna go one last round. Heads or tails? Three, two, one. And it's tails. All right. Did anyone stay in the round for the entire game? Let us know below in the chat. Thanks for joining us for Family Service Games. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. See you guys later. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany. Um, I look after our First Steps program, which is our preschool and toddler kids. And my name is Stephanie, and I look after our Kids Connect, which is our primary age kids. Um, come and join us for worship. We're gonna do some singing and dancing and some actions, so let's join go. along.
Let's pray. Thank you, God, that we are coming from COVID-19 pandemic and that our world is starting to get back to normal. Thank you for all our church leaders, their dedication and effort in facilitating online services during this time. Lord, I pray they continue to keep you as the focus of their life. Lord, we just want to bring before you the people of Vanuatu and the difficult times they've experienced. Firstly, with the volcano and having to relocate to other islands. Then, after returning back to Hurricane, Hurricane Harold came through and caused a lot of distraction. We thank you that at least they have been free from coronavirus over there. I pray that we don't forget the good things that we did in this pandemic, like being with them. I pray for the people who lost family members during this time due to COVID-19. I pray for all those in our community, country and around the world who are feeling down and who are struggling to process the situation that the world finds itself in. We pray for the recovery efforts as they start to rebuild again that they will be able to raise the money and receive enough aid to help with the rebuilding. We also pray for the medical centre, the Londua school and the principal of the school, Peter Bryant. We pray that you will help Peter to have the stamina, strength and wisdom to get the school up and running again. I pray for the people who lost their jobs due to COVID-19 restrictions. I hope that they get new jobs or return back to their old jobs. Father, our provider and our protector, through your goodness, we are alive and healthy enough to worship you. We pr thank you for the answer to this prayer in providing the Year 10 students with accommodation so they continue with their schooling at the local churches of Christ Bible College. We thank you for the school packs that teachers have been able to prepare each week for the Year 7 to 9 students to keep them motivated from home. And we also thank you for gifts and of the money and have been sent, has been able to help out with schooling, educational resources and food. Finally, we pray that as a church we will continue to support them in any way we can, especially by remembering them in our prayers. Amen. I pray that we will find a cure for COVID-19 soon. Amen. Be our Alpha and Omega. Bless us beyond measure and fill us with your peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. Say hello. Hello. You away? Hello, everybody. We're going to do some communion today. Okay, Zaki, special. We have, some, we have some drink and we have some bread. It's hash brown. Okay. But we're going to do communion and communion is special. Okay, and everybody at home can join in, okay? Okay, so the communion is special because we remember Jesus. Okay? Okay, remember that Jesus died for us to forgive our sins, okay? So we say thank you to Jesus, okay? Let's pray. We pray. Oh, that is that. We have to say thank you, Jesus, that you died for us to forgive our sins. Thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, we have some hash brown. Can you share with Dada? Share that. Thank you, thank you. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. We have some drink as well, Zachary. Okay. Yeah. Remember that Jesus blood for us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you like some milk? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Okay, say bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.
Hey everyone, if we haven't met before, my name's Ben and I'm one of the pastors here at Epping Church of Christ. And if we have met before, I, I really miss you guys. I really miss seeing you guys every week and running around here and playing hide and seek behind these couches and stuff. Um, but today I have something really exciting to share with you. Uh, it's a story that I absolutely love and I think shows us something really cool and really important. Uh, if you've been around at church very much before, uh, I hope that we've talked about God lots and uh, you've learned about who God is and uh, hopefully at home you talk about God sometimes too and, and even pray. But uh, today I want to ask the question, who is God? If one of your friends came up to you and asked you that question, who is God and what is God like? How, how would you answer that? Uh, what would you say to them? Uh, where, this is the point where normally I would have like the kid spot kind of thing where I'd bring the microphone around to you and uh, hear what you guys had to say. But uh, unfortunately, we can't do that on camera. So uh, I'm actually just going to give you guys like 30 seconds or a minute to have a chat about this at home uh, as your parent with your parents or whoever's around or even adults have a chat about this conversation. Uh, what would you say to if someone came up to you and asked you, who is God? How would you explain that to them? What would you say? Welcome back everyone. I hope you had a really good conversation about who God is and how you would explain who he is to one of your friends. Uh, it's a really tricky question and it's a big one, but I think it's also a really important question for us to think about. Uh, luckily for us, Jesus tells us these different stories. He, he gives us pictures in parables that actually explain to us about who God is. Uh, we're going to be watching a video about a parable today. It's famously called the parable of the prodigal son, but it's actually a parable about three different people. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Here's the video. God's story, two sons and a father. So part of God's story is about Jesus wanting us to know how much God loves us. Sometimes Jesus taught by using parables. A parable is a pretend story that teaches us a lesson. Jesus once told a parable about two brothers and a dad, and it begins like this. This dad had two sons. We call one the older son because he's, well, older. We call the other the prodigal son because he liked to waste money buying things he didn't need. One day, the prodigal son went to his dad and said, Dad, give me my share of your money. See, he knew when his dad died, he and his brother would split the money. But he didn't want to wait for his dad to get old and sick and die. He wanted money now. You might think most dads would say, no way. But his dad actually gave it to him. Kids, remember, this is a parable. I wouldn't try that at home. Anyway, the son took the money and ran away. We don't even know if he said goodbye. And for a while, he bought everything he wanted. He bought stuff for his friends, too. He had so much fun spending money that he never bothered to earn any. Soon, he had nothing left. So now he needed a job to buy food. Problem is, the only job he could find was working for a farmer, feeding pigs. You know, animals that enjoy snorting and rolling around in the blood. And to make matters worse, his friends stopped liking him since he stopped buying them things. Although people who hang around just because you're buying them things are not real friends. Here was the prodigal son, stuck feeding pigs. No friends, no home, and no food. He was so hungry, he wanted to eat the smelly, soggy pig food. He felt pretty sorry he had run away. Have you ever done something and felt sorry about it later? It's not fun to feel that way, is it? Well, one day, the prodigal son remembered how the people who worked for his dad had lots of food to eat. Hmm. He didn't think his dad would want him back as a son, but maybe he could be a servant in his dad's house. But this idea was risky. He had been so mean to his dad. He had taken money and run away. He'd spent every penny. He had acted like he never wanted to see his dad again. The prodigal son knew he didn't deserve to go home. 
But if he didn't ask his dad for a new job, he could die. So he decided to go back to his dad's house. Well, while the prodigal son was still pretty far away, his father saw him coming. And guess what? His dad started running to him. Then he hugged his son and even kissed him. Really, the Bible says that. In fact, he threw the prodigal son a huge welcome home party and even gave him special gifts. Meanwhile, the older brother was out in the fields working. Kids, remember this brother had been home the whole time, obeying his dad while his younger brother ran away. So when the older brother found out his dad was throwing a party for his younger brother, he was mad, no. really mad. He had never gotten a party. He thought his little brother deserved punishment, not a welcome home celebration. Jesus told this story because sometimes we act like the prodigal son. We do things that make God sad, like how the son took his dad's money and ran away. Other times, we act like the older son. We follow God's rules, but forget how special it is to obey him. Maybe we even want people who disobey to get punished instead of being excited when they decide to follow God. But Jesus wants us to know that no matter what we do, he loves us. Just like that father. And that's the story of the prodigal son. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. There were two brothers. One loved buying stuff. He asked his dad for money. He ran away. He spent the money. He felt sorry. He went back home. His dad threw him a party. The older brother got mad. The dad loved both sons. And no matter what, God loves us too. And that's a part of God's story. Great, so I really hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, knowing that this is a family service, I wanna be really short and sweet here, so I just have two things that I wanna to talk to you about now. Uh, the first one is that this story is about the perfect father. I love this video because it gives us this picture of who God is as this perfect father. Uh, how can we describe what God is like? He's like this beautiful father in the story. Even though one of his sons takes all his money and runs off and the other son is kind of angry and grumpy and self-righteous, uh, he, the father is patient with them. The, the father is loving to them. Uh, when the younger son comes back, the father runs out to him with open arms. I think this is really important for me to know because even when I mess up, when I stuff up, when I feel sad or something's happened, it's so exciting to know, it's amazing to know that this is who God is. God is this beautiful, warm father who wants to just give us a hug when we come back to him. I need to hear this often and, and I need to remember that no matter what I do, no matter what happens, what choices I make, I can always turn back to the father and go back home. That's a beautiful thing for me to remember. And here's point number two. And maybe this is a slightly bigger question for you slightly older people listening. Can you relate to either of these sons? And if you can, which one do you find yourself relating to more? And this video talked a lot about the two different sons because I think it wants us to consider the two different main ways that we turn our backs on God and miss out on experiencing his love. I wonder, do you experience God's love? Maybe it's because you fit in the shoes of one of these two people. The younger son turned his back on God in a really obvious way. Uh, we see that he runs off, he takes the money, he kind of parties and rebels and goes against his father's way of life. He turns his back on his loving father and, and actually misses out. The older brother though, uh, rebels in a really different way. Uh, he misses out on God's love in a less obvious way. He kind of does all the right things, but his heart's wrong. His motivations are wrong. Maybe that's a really complicated idea for you to talk about, but maybe a really good thing for you to chat about with your family later. The older brother did good things, but he did them for the wrong reasons. And because of that, he actually missed out on experiencing the, the love of his father as well. He turned his back on his father. I think that when we see ourselves in the shoes of either of these two brothers, it brings a new dynamic to seeing who the father is, to seeing how much the father really loves us. When we see that we don't deserve the goodness of the father because we've, we've stuffed up, we, we've made mistakes, when we don't deserve it, it actually means that the love is so much greater because that's what love is. That's what grace is. It's undeserved. So I hope that this story is a treasure to you like it's a treasure to me because uh, it shows us who God is and how dearly he loves us. I'm just going to wrap up by praying. God, I want to thank you so much for this story. 
Thank you that no matter what we do, that you still welcome us home. Thank you that you are the loving father in this story. And thank you that we can know you and enjoy you and and be your children. Help us to know this and treasure it more deeply every day. Amen. We'll go on to the next part. I don't know what it is. Is it worship? <laughs> no one told me! <laughs> <laughs>